Hi guys, this is Le French Melu and welcome on my fourth video of Fueled by Kindness. I managed to make it to Mongolia. I'm currently in Ulaanbaatar and I will leave tomorrow. I've been here for a couple days already and here are the 10 things that I've noticed about Mongolia. Number one, they have karaoke everywhere. So it really feels like for the first time I'm actually in an Asian country. Uh, in Kazakhstan, I didn't see that many karaoke. This is crazy, like everywhere you go, you will find karaoke. I've asked a couple of my drivers and uh, some random people if they like to do karaoke and they were anonymous. Yes, they love it. Number two, they have lots of Korean restaurants. It's crazy, like really, I'm not sure which between Korean restaurant and karaoke they have the most. It might be 50-50, maybe they even have more Korean restaurant than karaoke, I'm not sure. Number three, they finally have cold coffee cans in supermarkets. Uh, I've been looking for that one for quite some time. <laughs> and uh, in Russia, in the Asian part of Russia, I could not really find it in Kazakhstan either. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are none, but here it seems to be a lot more common. Um, I've been waiting for that one, yes. So I think it's the first step before Japan and all the crazy vending machines that have cold coffee all the time. Number four, the Mongolian language has many sounds that so far I cannot reproduce. Some vowels, I'm not sure I can distinguish them properly, but some consonants, even though I hear them, I am still unable to, to, to make them myself. Like some of them are like, okay, like kh or kh, that seems okay. And I'm not sure like if I'm doing it correctly actually, but some is more like kh, and that's like starts to be very difficult in a, in a, in a word. Number five, because I don't speak Mongolian, uh, sometimes with my drivers or some random people or other passengers, I try to use logical sequence. For example, there was this time when I tried to ask a young boy how to say one, two, three, four, five in Mongolian. So I went this way, like I wrote it on my phone with the digit and the French version, the English version, and then I asked like, Mongol, Mongol, like the Mongolian version. And still he was unable to understand what I was trying to ask him. Same for like, okay, uh, I, B, U, T, I think, I think it's T. And he, like, and still like unable to understand like this logical sequence. So what seems obvious for some cultures are not necessarily obvious for others. And that was kind of a barrier that I was not expecting at first. Six, Mongols live in a very harsh and tough environment. And through natural selections, only the ones who could store all the nutrients managed to survive, I believe. Um, it's probably the same thing that happened with the Polynesians. So they are the best at storing energy. However, with American fast food came very bad diet. So what happened with the Polynesians happens the same with uh, Mongols. When I crossed the border, I saw a lot more overweight and obese people than in Russia. Number seven. If you come to Ulaanbaatar, you will notice that people honk here all the time, mostly for no reason. So from down till dusk, you will hear honking of klaxons all the time, like no stop. Number eight. When you want to cross a street, sometimes you will have the zebra, sometimes you will not. And many times, even if there is the zebra, you will not have a traffic light to actually give you priority. So you will have to try little by little, and maybe there will be an accident, maybe not. But I've noticed that people do not drive very fast, so they should be able to stop before hitting you. Number nine. While we're still talking about cars, they have tons of Toyota Prius. Uh, in my observation, probably 70% of all the cars are from Toyota, so it's a good deal. Uh, and about half of them are Priuses. 
I've heard the number of 28% a couple of years ago or something like that of all the cars in Mongolia are Toyota Prius. So that can give you an idea. The other day in the morning, I was by the street and for about 10 seconds, there was not a single engine sound because all of the vehicles were using electric power. I was told that one of the reasons is because of the cold. During winter time, if you have an electric engine, then you will be able to start your car if you don't. And number 10, the banknotes. It is terrible. Um, to give you an idea, they have banknotes all the way from 10 of their currency to 20,000. The 10, for my part, I couldn't find any use case where it would be useful. I've been told that in the countryside, you can buy for one, you can buy one liter of water. So yeah, it, you could still buy like 10 liters of water. But personally, yeah, it's just like space that it takes in the wallet. I've seen people around here carrying like huge loads of cash, like a few hundred of these banknotes. The biggest one, which is 20,000, is about seven euro worth. And the prices in Mongolia, I figured, are about half the prices of Western Europe. So it's about as if the biggest banknote was 15 to 20 euros. You can imagine that you can't buy much with that. So that's it for today. That was the 10 things that I noticed in Mongolia. So as you may have noticed, I'm currently in a guest house called Milky Way. And the owner of this guest house, Oka, has been very chill. So if you ever go to Ulaanbaatar, just uh, come to visit him. I am not sponsored. <laughs> So as usual, don't forget to leave me a comment below if you have any observation about these 10 points or any other that you might have to share. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and the blog as well. Don't forget to put a thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you next time. <laughs> you can just try it like this first. <laughs> Sticky. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's it. Winter is very cold. So I've heard, but I'm in summer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 like, woohoo, I'm in summer, bitch. <laughs> I'll be gone when it's cold. Yeah. <laughs>